Hello friends, this video on squares and square roots part 7 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now let's look at the next interesting pattern. In fact, with uh, square numbers, you have a lot of interesting patterns. So this is just the second one. So this pattern says that a square of odd number is a sum of consecutive natural numbers. Okay, what, what can you give some examples of square of odd number? So is 4 a square of odd number? No, because 4 is 2 squared. So 2 is an even number. So 4 is not a square of odd number. Is 9 a square of odd number? Odd numbers, 9 is 3 squared, so 3 is an odd number. So 9 is a square of odd number. So some examples of square of odd numbers would be 9, 25, 121. So 9 is 3 squared, so it is square of odd number 3. 25 is 5 squared, so square of odd number 5. 121 is 11 squared. So this is also square of the odd number 11. So these are all examples of square of odd number. So this 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 pattern says that the square of odd numbers can be written as sum of consecutive natural numbers. For example, here 9 can be written as 4 plus 5. So 4 and 5 are consecutive natural numbers. Similarly, 25 can be written as 12 plus 13. So 12 and 13 are also consecutive natural numbers. 121 can be written as 60 plus 61. So again, 60 and 61, they are also consecutive natural numbers. So all odd squares of odd numbers can be written as sum of consecutive natural numbers. Now, let's take the example of 121. So if we say that 121 can be written as 60 plus 61, that doesn't mean that 121 cannot be written as sum of any other two numbers. 121 can also be written as 120 plus 1. It can also be written as 100 plus 21. But one of those possible uh, expressions could also be 60 plus 61. So basically, this relation holds true only for square of odd numbers. Do you want to try with a square of even number? Okay, let's take the example of 36. So 36 is the square of 6, which is an even number. So in this case, do you think that 36 can be written as sum of two consecutive natural numbers? So, so one option you can write 36 is 18 plus 18. Another option you can write it is 16 plus 20. One more option could be 17 plus 19. So these are the various options. In fact, there are many more options in which you can write 36. But you will never come across an expression where 36 can be written as sum of two consecutive natural numbers. So when you look at 16 and 18, 16 and 20, they are not consecutive. 17, 19, again, they are not consecutive. 18, 18, they are equal and not consecutive. So therefore, the squares of even natural numbers, this rule doesn't hold true. Now, whenever you are given square of an odd number, how will you write it as sum of two consecutive natural numbers? For example, 169 is one more example, which is a square of an odd number. 13 squared is 169. So how can you write this as sum of two consecutive natural numbers? Because for smaller numbers, it was comparatively easy to find out those two consecutive natural numbers whose sum is equal to that number. But as the number becomes bigger, how do you handle this? So to find this out that uh, it is the sum of which two numbers what you do is the given number minus 1 divided by 2 would be one number and the given number plus 1 divided by 2 would be the other number. So given number is 169 minus 1 divided by 2 this would be one number and given number plus 1 divided by 2 this would be the other number. So basically these two numbers are like you first find out the midpoint of the given number like you're talking about 169. So if you divide 169 into two equal halves that is you divide 169 by 2. So how much do you get? So 169 divided by 2 is 84.5. So that means two numbers which lies exactly before and after, that is two natural numbers close to 84.5, they would add to give 169. So one number could be 84, the other number could be 85. 
So with this calculation also you would get the same thing. This would be 168 by 2. So 2 8 is 16, 2 4 is 8 and this would be 170 by 2 which is 85. So 169 can be written as the sum of 84 and 85. So this is how you find out which two numbers sum would be equal to 169. So the given number minus 1 divided by 2 and the given number plus 1 divided by 2. So the concept is somewhat like this. Let's say this is your 169. So if you want to write 169 as sum of two things. So what you, we are trying to do is we are dividing 169 into two equal parts. Now the sum of these two equal parts will be equal to 169. Right? Now, when you exactly divide it into two equal halves, so each half is 84.5, but we are looking for natural numbers. Therefore, what we do? For one number, we subtract 0.5. We get 84. For the other number, we add 0.5. So, we get 85. So, 84 plus 85 also gives us 169. So, this is the logic behind this interesting pattern number 2. Now, let's move on. So, this, this was indeed interesting, right? Because we never thought that numbers in themselves can be so interesting and creative. But yes, they are. And that is how we have this entire branch of mathematics which deals all with numbers. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.